Welcome to Bricktown Ballpark, downtown Oklahoma City. We have a very, very special guest. River Ryan joins Dodgers Daily. Hey, River, this is the second time I've had a chance to talk to you. Every time I talk to you, I like to bring up the fact that your dad played AAA. You have a major league uncle. Your brother's in the major leagues. Man, you got a major league family, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's been it's been really cool to uh, you know grow up and you know learn the game through them, through their eyes. Um, going through the minor leagues, it's uh, they've had a lot of advice to give me, but uh, best advice all of them have given me is just stick to a routine, develop a routine, um, find what works for you. Um, that's what I was able to do this off season. You know, bring it into bring it to the beginning of the year keep going through it um, it's been working out pretty well so let's back up shoulder fatigue take us through that what what is exactly that mean obviously you're throwing the ball great right now yeah. take us through all that yeah um, well I mean my first year I threw what 47 and a half yeah. innings or something like that um, first year of pitching and then the next year I'm like close to triple that so I mean that's a lot of a lot of workload on a second year yeah. just just coming into pitch so right. um, that played that played a little toll on my arm uh, going into the end of last season but you know, took some rest this off season. Um, they were being really cautious with me. Um, just rehabbed it all spring training. Um, did a lot of rehab outings in uh, Arizona and then Rancho. So all's been well. Yeah, absolutely. So kind of take us through it. I know you were a two-way player with the Padres. You were a two-way player at UNC Pembroke. Two-way player back there in North Carolina in a rural setting. So take us through how much pitching you did until you got to the Dodgers. Yeah, I mean, I've always kind of played on both sides, both sides of the ball. You know, growing up um, in college, it was pretty much if they wanted me to pitch, they just threw me the ball and say, get on the mountain and toss it. So that's what I did. But uh, when I got to professional ball, I uh, they Padres drafted me as a two-way, and I just focused on the the offensive side of the ball, um, which was it was a blast. I had a lot of fun, and then got traded for Matt Beatty, um, spring training at 22, yeah. and then I went into the to the coach's office, talked to Donnie Alexander, and I was like, "Hey, so what? What do you got in mind? What are we, what are we planning on doing?" He just said, "You're going to pitch," and I said, "All right, cool, yeah, yeah, outstanding." Okay, so you touched 99 the other day. Rumor has it is you hit 101 sometime last year. I've actually missed that. Yeah, I should have picked up on that. But hey, 101. So you can say touched 101. Stuff looks great right now. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I. Uh, some point middle of last year, I can't remember the series, um, but yeah, it was just the ball was flying out of my hand that day, and I was able to rip one in there 101. So yeah. yeah, and the spin rate is great too. It's one thing to throw hard, but it's another if you have that good spin on it that keeps your velocity longer as yeah. it approaches home plate. So the ball really has to feel be feeling good coming out of your hand right now. Yeah, no, it feels great. I uh, was talking to Chris Archer about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago after my start in Houston. Um, and my first game back in AAA, I was definitely trying to, you know, light up the radar gun a little bit, and it was kind of all over the place, couldn't throw strikes. So uh, after the outing, we kind of talked a little bit and um, came up with a plan of just, instead of trying to throw it so hard, you know, light up the radar gun, just try to cruise at 96, yeah. 98, you know, throw strikes, don't try to put too much effort into it, get ahead, that's the biggest thing you can do. So. That's what I've been trying to do ever since that start in Houston, and it's been working out really well for me. Sounds like a hitting coach telling their hitter to have a smooth swing, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of one of those. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so your stuff is fantastic. You know, I've reported several different times. Obviously, the the four seam, the the change up, the curveball, and the slider. But you actually have a sinker, and then you have six pitches now. Is that right? Takes through your mix. Yeah, we uh, so we got the we got the four seam fastball, we got the slider, curveball, change up, and this off season we. Uh, kind of fooled around with a cutter sinker. Um, and actually my last outing, I was able to implement both, you know, nice. a lot more regularly. And it, it So why it, have both? What's the point of having both the sinker and a four seam for River Ryan? Definitely for lefties, the cutter's gonna work really well off that heater up and in. Um, nice. It's a great way to get them to commit. Looks a lot like the four seam. Um, get a lot of weak contact with it. Uh, sinkers mainly for righties. Um, because everything I throw is usually going left or it's yeah. hard and you know straight. So definitely keep them honest on that inner half with that sinker has been worked out really well so far. So how hard was it for you to get the ball to turn right? Not very hard. Not very good. Okay, yeah, good. it's just kind of just fooled around with the grip, found out what works. I mean, it's kind of like uh, I guess you can classify it as a splinker. I okay, mean, I, nice. I, I definitely split my fingers. Nice. I don't throw it like a traditional two seam or sinker. So I definitely split my my middle finger and index finger on it so the dodgers do this quite a bit and i really like it because it allows you to get comfortable kind of get to know the area the scene 
And they brought you up for the last two games of last year in mm -hmm. AAA, so you know what it looks like. Started you back in AAA this year, so talk about that transition from AA Tulsa to AAA Oklahoma City. Yeah, AA to AAA, um, talent-wise, it, it's, I mean, you're facing a lot more big leaguers or yeah. guys that have definitely been in the big leagues um, or going to be in the big leagues at some point. Um, the biggest transition from AA to AAA has definitely been throw more strikes. Yeah. Um, you can't fall behind because if you fall behind, they're going to take, they're going to take, and they're going to make you force or force you to throw a strike for sure. Um, so definitely just trying to get strike one, get ahead in the count um, as fast and as efficiently as I can has been the biggest adjustment for me. So you moved up to every level one step at a time. Which level was the toughest one for you to jump? And just kind of talk about the different jumps. Yeah, I honestly think going from double A to triple A has been the biggest jump for oh, me. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, simply due to having to throw more strikes. You know, at the lower levels, it's you can kind of just throw it around the zone. You got more free swingers. And they're going to swing at a lot of pitches that you offer, but uh, you get you get some veteran veteran uh, ex big leaguers in triple A that they're going to make you throw a strike, and they're not going to swing until you throw a strike. So um, that's definitely been probably the biggest transition for me. That is a sweet hat, by the way. Thank that, you. that rivals that Tulsa drift hat that they have. That's that's yeah. sweet. I gotta I, get one. I appreciate it. Hey, as you move up, I know the Dodgers. They like to make suggestions, not necessarily demands of your career, that type of thing. Does that change as you get closer to the major leagues? Uh, I mean, for me, not so much. Yeah. Um, the biggest thing has just been I gotta I gotta throw, like I said, more strikes. Um, and then everything else is just gonna play out as it is. I try not to focus on. Um, everything that, you know, comes with, you know, com competing against your fellow starting pitchers yeah. or competing against the team. I just go out there and try to control what I can control. And if they call my name, I'll be ready. So you're 25. You're not on the 40 man because you weren't eligible for the rule five last year. Yeah. So the Dodgers, they, they we weren't going to lose you because you weren't going to get taken to the yeah. rule five. So does that kind of add fuel to your fire to get added to that 40 man? I mean, it definitely is in the back of your mind. I mean, yeah. a lot, I'd be lying if I said I'd, I wasn't thinking about it, but uh, I definitely try not to go into work every day and focus on, oh man, I got to make the 40 man. I'm either going to make the 40 man or I'm not, or another team's going to pick me up. Um, but yeah, that's, yeah. that's pretty much it. Okay, so you came back great. We talked about the below. The location has been simply fantastic. So in what ways do you think the time off helped you? Just rest, honestly. Yeah. Coming coming from throwing 47 innings to almost tripling it in my next year, is uh, it was pretty taxing on the arm, but um, kind of having that mentality of, all right, I'm a starting pitcher now, man. I'm going to have to throw 100, 150 innings a year. Um, and like I said before, that routine, sticking to it every yeah. day has just been huge for me. Yeah. You have the dog mentality. You're the type of guy that has the ultimate amount of confidence. Every time you toe the rubber, you feel like you are better than a hitter 60 foot six in front of you. Then you look around and you have all these dogs around you too, like they're just as good as you are, right? What's it like playing with so many guys in this organization that are so good? Yeah, no, it's it's great. Um, it's definitely a, a dog eat dog world. You yeah. know, it's you got to try to outperform the next guy, and I think it's in the back of everybody's mind. Um, I definitely try not to read into it too much. Yes. Like I can't control what other people do. I just can Correct. try to control what I do, um, and let the chips fall where they may. Yeah, I kind of read between the lines there. This is just me saying that. You guys, and this is a healthy thing, maybe compete against each other. Like, yeah. oh, yeah, you just did that. Well, watch this, right? Yeah, yeah, 100%. <laughs> we definitely try to top each other. I think it's good, honest, competitive fun. Um, but, yeah. So, last question for me. What types of things or what specific thing do you think you're doing good enough right now? If you got the call up, got put on the 40 man, then the 26 got the call up, what are you doing well enough right now to be a consistent major league? Yeah, um, I mean, there's, there's areas that I can definitely do a little bit better on, but um, – what I think I'm doing really well right now is where I want to throw a pitch, I'm relatively close to that Absolutely. spot um, with my misses. Yeah. Um, good pitches are good pitches. Everybody's good pitches are good pitches. Great point. It's uh, being able to make those little mistakes in relatively the same area that you're trying to throw the pitch. I think I'm doing that pretty well right now. I'm not letting anything really leak over the middle of the plate um, and just throwing, throwing every pitch with conviction. Um, and racing, racing to two strikes as fast as I can, and then you can kind of just play with the hitter and do whatever you want. All right, River Ryan, thank you so much. It's the second time you joined. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you coming in. Absolutely. So River Ryan, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much.